Hello everyone, this is Matt Strats with the first ever video on my channel about the expansion draft in NHL 20. Um, in this video I'm going to try to cover for you guys uh, what strategies you should be doing for, to approach this draft and how you can try to maximize your team roster um, even though you're just starting out. Um, so, the best part about the expansion draft is that you get to make your own team. The bad part is trying to build up your team to become a championship caliber team. So, what I want to try to cover is specifically what areas of your team you need to draft in terms of forwards, your defense, your goaltending and who to draft in order to properly build a core um, within your new team. Now, the way the expansion draft works was back when 2017 when the Las Vegas Golden Knights came into the NHL. Um, I'm just going to do a quick recap if you guys don't know how it works. is that um, all 30 NHL teams in this case submitted a projected list of players. I believe it was 10 or 11 including goaltenders, and pretty much the rest of their NHL rosters were exposed. So, for, unfortunately, um, each team has to cough up one player. Now, either they can just say, like, hey Vegas, here's my roster, and have fun, or they can say, oh, like, here, here's my roster, but I'll give you a second or a first round pick if you take one of these really bad contracts, which is what happened a lot. Um, it happened with the Islanders, it happened with the Blue Jackets, um, I believe it happened with Anaheim uh, when they coughed up Shea Theodore. So, unfortunately in this game, for some reason, it doesn't let you do that. Um, so, unfortunately, we don't get to do that much fun. Hopefully, they'll um, put it in either next year or when Seattle comes into the league uh, two years from now for the 21-22 season. But, um, yeah, so I want to share with you guys my strategy for doing this, which is kind of what Vegas did, is that we're going to build from the net out. Prioritizing goaltending, then your defensive core, and then your four group. Um, the main reason for this is that in this game, um, and in reality, you can't outgun your opponents every night. It's just not going to happen. If you have awful goaltending and awful defense, it's just not going to be a good time. Um, so, what Vegas said is that they got Mark Andre Fleury as their goaltending cornerstone who's still playing out of his mind for Vegas. Um, and then they have a defensive core of Shea Theodore, like I previously mentioned. They they have Braden McNabb. Um, and who's, who's that other guy? Shoot. I can't remember his name. But, um, so... So they have a pretty good defensive core in place. Um, hopefully I'll remember his name. He's from the Capitals. I can't remember at this time. Sorry about that. But trust me, they have a good defensive core. So um, what it does, it allows you to stay in close games. Um, your good goaltending defense is allowed to keep the puck out in the net, clear rebounds, prevent odd man breaks. Um, pretty much anything you can think of, they stop. And that's pretty much what you want to prioritize. Um, this keeps the score down, so you'll be in a lot of games where it's like one nothing games, 2-1, 3-2. But it does force you to play a more grinding and more strategic and therefore a little more stressful game but it does give you a better chance to win so with that being said we're going to prioritize our goaltending then we're going to we're going to build our defensive core next 
and then go for our forwards last. Forwards should always be last. Um, and with each team, as I'm going to show you guys right now, um, I try to pick one forward, one defenseman, one goalie from each team and try to keep them in the back of my head. But I have a website to try to help you guys. I'll link in the description below um, with papers that I use that helps me keep everything organized. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to advance the expansion draft finally and see what our uh, draft position is. Um, yeah, another thing is I decided to go with uh, Seattle, but I also picked the totem since I believe that's um, that's what their name's going to be. Uh, if I had to put my money on it, I don't like the name, but uh, you, you have no choice here. Um, and we went down from three to five, which is still a good pick, but it, we're really hoping for the first overall, but uh, you can't be greedy. So, we're going to go here, and I'm going to save this real quick. Because I like to save. And then we're going to begin our draft. Alright, so what's really cool about this draft is it's kind of in real life where, like, uh, you, you have all the teams and you could just kind of pick a spot or pick a player and then you can go, oh, wait, you know what? Maybe I should go back there and look at their roster once over which is really cool. So you have all 30 teams. Now, if you may notice, all the way at the end, which will come into play when Seattle actually comes into the league, is that Vegas is exempt from this expansion draft. So, you can't pick from their team because they just came into the league, and that would be a little unfair. So, real quick, we're going to start off, going to go look at our goaltending, um, for each team, easily the first thing I look at, um, we are definitely not using Ryan Miller. Um, Darcy Kemper is good. Uh, he's been having a hell of a season this year before all the coronavirus hit. Um, so what I try to look for in goaltenders is I'm looking at their overall, their age, and their salary. In this case, I'm definitely not picking Mike Smith because 82 is okay. His age is insanely high, and his salary is too much. What I try to look for is a goalie like Peter Mrazek. He has a decent overall. His age is ideally under 30 and he has a very cheap contract. The only problem is you see that one year um, left on his contract. That means when you draft him after this expansion draft he goes right into free agency. So he's probably realistically going to be wanting like four million dollars. Um, I try to get, if I'm lucky, an 85 goaltender or higher. Now when I did this with my own team, which is the Seattle Railers, uh, Simeon Varlamov was available, like he is here, which is cool. Um, I got Jacob Markstrom and uh, Robin Leonard, and uh, and that's uh, it was a really solid group of goaltending, probably the best I've ever had, honestly. And and um, yeah, when I had that roster set, it. It had so many good players. It had Brent Burns available. It had Mark Giordano. It had Matt Duchesne. And it, my team was a championship caliber team coming out of the gate. Which never happens. So I doubt that this is going to happen this time since it's a little... Um, it's after the coronavirus happened. This is after the trade deadline passed. Um, so... We're going to pick Robin Leonard here, uh, even though his contract's going to expire, which kind of sucks. He's going to want it quite a bit of money, but he's a 85 overall goalie. He'll be a good starting goaltender. Um, 
Will Henrik Lundqvist be available? That is the question. Nah. Oh well. Uh, I really feel bad for him you know, on on the Rangers. Eh, he. I really wish they traded him to a Stanley Cup caliber team because it's it's very unfair to him. What's going on in New York? Um, I do have to say I am a Flyers fan. Um, I do not like Pittsburgh, but um, I try not to be biased when I'm doing games like this. It, um, in real life, I'll be like, it, oh, like, okay, Pittsburgh sucks, but realistically, I'll be like, okay, Sidney Crosby's a godsend talent. Like, there's no arguing. Um, so, with that side note out of mind, here we go. So, Jacob Arkstrom still on. Now, this is a great contract. Um, he has 85 overall. overall. Uh, he's almost 30, but that salary at that year is really good for an 85, 85-year, oh my, 85-year-old contract. 85-year-old goal. Ah, I can't speak. An 85 overall goalie. So, we have our starter, we have our backup, um, as you see on the bottom, I forgot to mention, it shows you your cap space, your team cap hit, roster space, um, and all the positions for your team. So we ideally want one more. Um, I, w I want to get Simeon Varlamov. The problem is he's over. He's on the wrong side of 30, and his contract is a little high. Um, yeah, and his contract's expiring, and he's probably going to want to raise. So I'll probably go back to Arizona and grab Kemper because, again, 83 overall, he's getting paid under two million. Uh, he's just overperforming his contract. So we have our goalies. Um, I'm trying to speed this up so this video is not too long by not going through each team and be like, okay, forward, defenseman, goalie. I'm gonna mark them down, and go down a list. Um, I'm really trying to speed this th this up so you guys aren't sitting here all day watching this. Um, so now we're going to look at our defensemen. Uh, what I try to look for is somebody like jo Josh Manson, under 30, high overall, at $4.1 million salary at four years. That's really, really good. Um, I'm very surprised that they have him available, so I think I'm going to grab him, because you can't just cough him up. So, we're going to go around each team, Zach Bogosian, good God, that's, Buffalo's just, their contracts are just not good. It's pro probably one of the reasons why they're so bad. They have, like, really bad players at obnoxious contracts. There you go, Mark Giordano's still available at 35. With four years left, I don't... I wouldn't... On my other expansion team, I picked him and then I swapped him immediately because he was old. Um, and he... And he was still good. There's no way he he's probably going to be at 82 by the time that contract's done or 80. Um, that's the one thing I don't like about this game. I do have to say is that when he when they approach 40, they the players just tank. Um, I'm gonna take Eric Gustafson here, which is what I did with my franchise, because 27 at 1.2 and 84 overall goal. Overall, uh, you can't really beat that. Um, so, so yeah. It, so let's go back to the defenseman. Columbus, nah. Dallas, no. Detroit, oh god. Oh, that's. 
That's so bad. His contracts are so bad. Um, Adam Larson. Mm. <sighs> He's on the border. I don't know if I want him, but let's just keep going. Try to get lucky. Uh, Jared Spurgeon. Now, defenseman. Now, I try to go for tall guys, um, usually above six foot, who can actually hit. I like to hit people. Um, it's, n it's not like, um, it's not just for fun I hit people. It's that I like to get them off the puck, especially since when you're playing a computer, for some reason, they'll hit you and you'll cough off the puck, but it, like, they'll barely tap you and boom, the, they have the puck and they're going the other way. Um, but if you tap them, they keep the puck and they end up scoring. It's, I don't, it's happened to me way too many times, and, you know, I'm a little salty about it, as you can tell. Um, we're going to take Matthias at home here, 6'4", big guy. Well, he's almost 30, but at that contract, <laughs> it's kind of a steal. Um, so we got three defensemen. We have a pretty solid group of core so far. Um, hopefully that keeps the trend. Uh, it looks like a lot of the players are still available from when I did my franchise. I had a championship caliber team coming out of the gate. Um, I really, really try to keep my team bad, uh, the first year so I can accumulate draft picks and, um, dra draft the future core of the team instead of being a championship caliber right out of the bat. But it's good to get, like, um, these kind of players, if they're available. Uh, Jacob Truba, uh, he's gonna want to raise. We'll just keep going for now. Ah, uh, yeah, not, we're not getting this, gonna, that's not gonna happen. Pittsburgh, oh god, oh, that's, that's just bad. Ooh. Uh, Jack, jo I, n I never liked the Jack Johnson signing, and I'm sure Pittsburgh fans aren't either. Um, if you guys have ever watched Urinating Tree, he's a Pittsburgh fan. He he does not like his own team um, with some of the stuff that they do, which I don't blame him for. But I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, you guys should go watch his stuff. His stuff is awesome. Um... I think I'm going to take Brent Birch just because of the overall. I know his age. I know his contract. I know he's going to be 41 at the end of it. But he's going to be good for a couple years on the back end. He's a big boy. He's a little slow, but he's a very good defenseman. Um, it kind of be hard not to take a guy like him. Um, what I might do with a contract like his... It's where it's not ideal, length is high, his salary cap's high, is that I might ride him for a couple years, and then say, see ya, and trade him. Um, I do that a lot, because, again, once they hit 35 to 40 range, they drop in this game. They <laughs> like Brent Burns, by the time his contract's over, he'll probably be in the 70s somewhere. Um... Because it's a mess. It, that's the one. Like. Ah, uh, Ryan McDonough. I would say stay away from that contract. Um. This is bad. So. He's 30. 4.7 for 87 overall defenseman. That's good. Contract expiring. Extension. Which I think is cool. They kind of, I forget when they added these into the game, but um, extension kicks in. Yikes! That term and that salary for a defenseman ending his contract at 37 years old. 
I don't I don't like it. I know it's a way that they'll like save money over time with these players, but it no, it's just not good. Uh Jake Muzzin. He's thirty. Big boy. I think I'm gonna take him. Um I'm trying to think of other stuff that I try to look for for defensemen to help you guys out. Uh like I said before, try to get tall guy, big guy. I want somebody with reach. Um, try, try to prevent on man breaks. Somebody who, who's going to be in front of the net, who's going to clean up rebounds. It, it's having a high core defense is going to pay off in the long run. It's just so much better. You'll see your goals go down. It um, rebounds will stop like. Be clear at all pretty good uh, they'll get back on defense pretty quickly like it, it's it's night and day when you have good defensemen it so right now we have five defensemen um I'm trying to think of other players that I might have seen we already picked somebody from Arizona um so we have five high good defensemen now we have salary cap for 53 million they took a big chunk out of it so I'm going to try to look for um, bottom pair and then um, so finish that bottom pair and then look for extra defensemen um, so our top guys um oh I, I don't want to do it this time. I, I don't. I just don't. Travis Harvinick, perfect. 83. Um, I really hope they don't have a good forward. Um, so, I forgot to mention about my team structure real quick. Um, your top pairing defenseman, you want 85 or higher, ideally. Um, any their salary caps like six and a half million or higher than that. Um, or your middle pair defenseman you want between f about f four to six and a half million dollars. Um, and then your bottom, your bottom pair you want ideally two and a half or under. Um, I know as the salary cap goes higher, the bottom pair defensemen want more. That's why I'm saying about two and a half million um, per year. Let's just try it. The best ideal bottom pair is under two million. Uh, defensemen generally get paid higher just because there's just less of them. Um, so. Uh, having a hard time picking from Colorado. Let's see their forwards. Now here while I'm picking bottom pair defensemen, I'm just like, okay, if I pick him, am I going to miss anything? See, if I if I pick a uh, defenseman off Columbus, I miss out on Matt Duchesne. Yes, his contract's expiring. Um, might have to bite the bullet with that one because that's a perfect top line center until you're uh, for a group develops. Uh, Detroit, we're going to stay away from. Uh, I feel so bad for their team and their fans because they're just. It, the team's just really bad. Like. Boom, boom, boom. At the three defensemen on your roster. That's way too much. The Kaiser's a good defenseman, but he. 5 million. Yikes. Uh, Johan Larson. I think I'm going to take him if there's yeah alright so we got seven defensemen now so we're going to take a break um yeah so another thing I try to do while I'm doing this expansion draft is trying to um fill out the main roster spots so for defensemen as I explained I had my six defensemen and and then I try to add an extra one. So that's seven. So now, while I go through my forwards, I'm going to start 
with my first line going to go left wing, center, right wing. Then my second line, left wing, center, right wing, etc. Um, forwards here, it's whoever's available, honestly. Um, trying to avoid those bad contracts like Kyle Poso, good God, that I didn't know it was that bad. Oh, all right. So we want to look for left wingers. Um, so start with Boston since Marcus Johansson. That's pretty good. His contract's expiring. We'll see if there's any other good left wingers. And the one, the other bad thing about the expansion draft I forgot to mention is that sometimes you will bite the bullet with a team who literally gives you nobody over 80 overall, and you're just kind of like, alright, I'll throw them down to the minors. So, that does happen. Um, I, wanted, I would literally save those teams for last. I would completely ignore them. Uh, and that's kind of why I didn't want to pick Robin Leonard, but you got to prioritize your goaltending over your forward group. Um, it, it, for me, it's the best. It's I really do believe it's the best way to go. It, it just gives your team that much better chance of winning. Uh, David Perron. Okay, let's see who else they have available. Yeah, um, I think we're going to take David Perron. Uh, he's on the wrong side of 30, but he'll get to 35. He will... If he does drop, he will be an 82 overall. Um, by the time he's 35, probably. If that's the case, I'm going to probably trade him at some point. So we're going to pick David Perron as our first line left wing. So let's look for our first line center. Um, so... I'm trying to condense everything I know into this video, and I know I'm kind of bouncing all over the place because it's a lot to think about. Um, I do have a website. I will link it into the description below to try to help you guys. Um, I try to kind of lay out everything um, on there um, it, to try to make this easier because I know... Some people are like, oh, like, I'll just go in there, have fun with it, like, and draft everything under the sun, which is, it. hey, go for it, if that's what you want to do. But me, I really like looking at the numbers. I'm, I'm a nerd. I'm, I'm an engineer, so it's what I do. So it, I like looking at that stuff and trying to construct the best possible roster that I can. I don't know why I'm looking at centers. I'm, I want a top line right wing. Ah, uh, boy. So I'll link that website in the description below. Like I said, um, hopefully that'll help you guys a little better. I'm always looking for feedback. Um, so if you guys have any fee any possible feedback on that site, if you think I missed some stuff, um. If I, if I think, or if you guys need me to expand on something, I'll go into it. Um, I am definitely up for making multiple videos for the expansion draft. Um, like in the future, once you get your team started, like, oh, what you should do, like approaches to the future, which is, I already kind of told you guys, I try to aim for, like, try to keep my team as bad as possible um, so I can get higher draft picks and kind of speed up the rebuild um, but in this case it might not happen um, and that's the bullet for getting bread burns yeah so just let me know if you guys want me to I'll I do plan on coming back to this kind of showing you guys what I try to do in free agency what I try to do in the draft um, 
Oh man, there are no good right wings available. Oh god. And I'm not picking Kyle Lopez, so that's not happening. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I might bite the bullet and get Michael for a leak, unless I saw somebody else. Um, so your first line, you definitely want at least an 85 or overall, um, or higher. Um, again, this is kind of where you're kind of biting the bullet and being like, uh, yeah, there's not, not really good right wingers, so coming out of the game, we're not going to have very good right wingers. It's just what happens. I could have gotten Gustav Nyquist if I didn't get Brent Burns, but again, prioritize defense goaltending. It will pay off, I promise. Um, I might get Kasperi Cup. But... Oh, wait, no. I already got Jake Muzzin. Damn. Alright, so Calgary Flames are going to get Michael for a leak, so there's our first line. Um, left, or we're going to start with our second line left wing. Second line, uh, you want to try to get between four and six and a half million dollars. Um,. Marcus Johansson, even though we have to negotiate a contract, fine. Uh, he's perfect. Um, second line, you kind of want in that range at 82, like 82 to 85, ideally. Um, so let's try to go for another center if there's one available. That's in that range. I doubt it. Okay. Um, have you already picked somebody from Colorado? Okay. Um, yeah, we might do that. We might just grab Derek Broussard. Now I know he's 30, but... Setters, um, I completely forgot to mention. Um, speed. Definitely helps for pretty much every player. I try to get fast players. Centers, I definitely prioritize face-offs. Um, 80 face-offs are pretty good. Um, honestly, I think the highest face-off I've ever seen in this game, and this is with like Connor McDavid and Sidney Crosby, I think it's like an 85, but I might be wrong. Don't take my word for it, but um, I, like to, I would like to go back and check that. Um... Yeah, the face-off ratings in this game for some players are really, really low. Um, yeah, so centers, try to prioritize your face-offs. Left wings, right wings, I try to go um, somebody fast and somebody who can shoot. Um, yeah, so those are a couple stats I also like to look at if I don't, if I don't know who to decide. I normally do that in free agency and the expansion draft. I try not to do it because, again, it ends up taking me like an hour at least to do this. Um, and we're already at 34 minutes in this video. So, oh, geez, what team? So, we're trying to look for a second line right wing real quick. Uh, we might. Yeah. Oh, uh, we might, yeah, right wing is definitely going to take a hit for us. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, not good. Um, I would get Casperi Kaffin in if I didn't. <sighs> I'm going to have to pick somebody from... Buffalo, but I'll stay I'm trying to stay away from them because their contracts are just bad. It's yeah. yeah Buffalo's going down the drain. I don't know if you guys how um much you guys follow everything going around the league. I try to follow everything that's going on. Buffalo, Ristolainen, and, and Eichel kind of want out, which is insane. Um. But I don't blame them. It, 
Buffalo is one of those teams um, with really bad management. Um, they Their owners, not very good. I think we're going to go with Jester Fass. He's also Fass. Uh, um, that's not a pun because his last name is Fass, but um, he does have a decent speed. So just take my word for it. Um, we're going to go with a third line left winger. <sighs> Alright, I might just see who's available for Buffalo and just take the hit. Because you have to pick somebody. Um, ah. <laughs> Their contract is so bad. <laughs> uh, Connor Sheary's definitely getting overpaid here. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's just... Uh, wow, his face saws are high for a what? For a left wing? I've never seen that. A lot of the face offs I see for wingers are like in the 60s, 7, like low 70s at best. I've never seen any. Wow. That's just crazy. Um. I. I might just take this guy because he's uh he's all he's just young enough that he might grow a little bit. All right, so still trying to find a third line. Um, left wing. So I think we're gonna go with Michael Furlan, um, even though he's probably gonna be wanting probably three million dollars during the off season. Uh, we're going to select him, so it'll be our third line left wing, so we're all good with our left wings. Um, I know I kind of went out of order because I just wanted to get Buffalo out of the way because they're, they're just bad. Um, or they just don't have anything available, and they're bad. Uh, Pittsburgh's another team that you guys saw me skipping over. It's not because I don't like them, it's because they're one of the teams that you get bit in the ass with this, um, with who they have exposed. Um, I think I'm going to go with Zach Aston Reese here, or Dominic Simon. Ah, his face is not good, but he's kind of fast. Mm. Zach Aston Reese has a better shot, so I think I'm going to take him. Uh, he's probably going to end up being our third line right wing. Again, I know I'm going out of order, but I just, at, at some point I just don't like those teams being on the board because they're kind of like, oh, should I go here or should I go there? Um, geez, Harlock, I think I'm going to draft him just because he's so young. 78 overall, he has a lot of room to grow at 23. Um, shoot. So I need to draft a third line center. Still. And it's not going to be Franz Nielsen. Good God. Detroit. Uh, man, that's another team that went downhill. Victor Rask. Oh, God. But with all their Stanley Cups, they had to, they kind of had to pay, they had to pay the bill for all those, all the consecutive playoff runs, all the Stanley Cups. Eventually, at the end of a dynasty, the waiter, it, let's just say, uh, the waiter comes with the bill, and you gotta pay up, and unfortunately, they're really paying for it. Um, centers, we might have to be. I have to bite the ball. Oh, Ryan Rust. Uh, for uh, God, no, he's not. He's not good. To, not good. Uh, face offs. If you saw that, Joe Thornton, another unfortunate soul on a team that did not treat him well. Should have been traded. Don't know why they didn't trade him. 
I feel so bad for him. We're gonna go with Anthony so Sorelli here, because unless I picked... I don't think I picked anybody from uh, Tampa yet. Alright, so there's our third, or third line center. We have our fourth. We already drafted. Right wing, I believe. If we look at our picks here. Yeah, we do need a fourth line right wing. And then we're going to draft our quote fifth line. Um, we're going to go with Brent, uh, yeah, Brent Connolly. He has a good shot and decent speed, and he's big. So we're going to pick him. So we have all four lines. We're going to pick our fifth line, which is kind of like the extras um, that you have scratched on your team. Uh, and then we're going to go back to our goalies, try to draft a couple AHLers. Um, I know um, what I try to do is I try to grab a couple of good guys for the AHL because um, if you have a good team down there and they win I've seen I've personally seen my players grow more um, in the minors which uh, as opposed to being in the NHL um, I, I don't know why that is I guess the game has some sort of algorithm I, I'm just not sure how it works uh, ooh. I, I, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I, I was looking at the center here. He's 23. That's pretty good. But I think I'm going to draft. Uh, yeah, might as well. Um, I also forgot to mention overalls and... Um, and money uh, for your third line and fourth lines. Fourth lines you want under two million. Um, your third line anywhere between two to four at most. Um, I have no problem. I know I've been bouncing it back a lot back and forth with um like ideal contracts, ideal overalls. I can cover that in another video. I can go over a team where I think like Buffalo. Um, who's like really bad and a team structure and just go over all that stuff. I don't mind doing that. Um, so, oh, good God. Okay. Let's just, so I got a center. I'm looking for a left wing. I definitely not going to find it on Detroit. Kyle Clifford or Brandon Leipzig. Wow, he's fast. <clears throat> oh, he's slow. Oh, good God. Okay, I'm going to get Brandon Leipzig. That's going to be our left wing. Our extra left wing. Now we try to go for extra right wing. We'll go back to goaltending. We're both available. I like Pontus Alberg. So I'm going to pick him. Alright, so now we're going to go into AHL goaltending. Um, <laughs> no. Um, let's see, Montreal. Yeah, AHL, you're kind of good, like uh, Charlie Lindgren's good um, for an AHL um, goalie. If you get any goalie in AHL between 75 and 80, you're pretty much set. Um, he's 25, so I think I'm going to pick him. I'm going to also pick a second one because uh, you need two goalies. You need a starter and backup. And we're not going to pick from the Devils. That's just not going to happen. Uh, Mike Condon. I 
I think I might pick him, except I didn't pick anybody from my Flyers. So, yeah, they definitely don't have the goaltending to do it. Um, yeah, I think I might go with Condon. Ah, uh, no, they're too much. They're too much for AHL. You want to try to stay under a million dollars with AHL goalies. Oh, I want to pay. Come on. Give me something good. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Um, Mike Comer. Perfect. 23. So he's good. That's perfect. Um, and now defenseman. Uh, New Jersey has a good young core defenseman, Mirko Moeller. Perfect. Gonna pick him. Um, I just noticed I have twenty million dollars in cap space, which is good. Usually I don't have it that low, so I'm in, I'm in good shape. Um, because I definitely don't want um to bring that all the way down because you only have thirty players on your roster. Um, you need to fill it up, like. Like, I know, like, most of this is your NHL team, but you, you got a lot of filling up to do. You got the, you even got the draft to come in, too. Um, I, I was just on Ottawa. What am I doing? Um, ooh. Jeez. Alright, so... Let's go back to Detroit, and if not, I might have to. Pe <laughs> I might just say like screw it and um, just pick forwards because I what? Oh my goodness, I do like Madison Bowie, so I think I'm go gonna go with him. All right, so we got Ottawa, Philadelphia um, remaining. We're gonna do that real quick. Um. I like Pontus or uh, Oscar Lindbergh, not Pontus Alberg. I'm gonna pick him because you can't have too many centers. Um, as a Flyers fan, you know that because if you don't, they have a log jam of centers, but it's cleared up pretty good. It was really bad a few years ago. Um, and then here, mm, <sighs> Lawton. Hartman, faster, sh he's faster, but Lawn has a better shot, and he's younger. <sighs> I like Lawn; he's a good fourth liner. Well, I might have to go with Hartman on this playthrough. All right, so that's gonna be our full roster. Is this glitching? Oh no. Cause I, I pick I pick Ryan Harmon and it's like no. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. I don't know why it's. Does it not want me to pick Ryan Harmon? That's funny. It doesn't want me to pick anybody on my team. That's cool. <laughs> I see how it is. <laughs> okay. Then, I don't know if I should auto-generate a pick. <sighs> Alright, so... It, so, we got Sam Moran. I like him. That's fine. I don't know why it's not letting me pick anybody from my team. But, here, let's see if I can go in and swap him for Ryan Hartman. No. Okay. I guess it just hates the Flyers. That's fine. But, yeah, so, that's our draft. Let's let's see. We still have 19 million in cap. Wow, so we're in good we're in good shape now. A lot of these contracts are going to expire. Um, 
So that's something else we have to keep in mind. A lot of players are going to want raises or they're just going to stay in that spot. Um, so we're going to finish the draft. And that is the team that I picked. Um, I hope I went over and covered everything that you kind of want to look for um, in terms of overall age contracts. Uh, if I didn't, please leave a comment down below or on my site. Um, I'm doing this for you guys because I think it's not only is it fun for me to analytically go through this, but also um, to really help you guys out and try to show you guys where um, or where I come from in terms of strategy. Um, I, I've watched a lot of videos. A lot of videos have covered like team structure and are kind of like, oh, like let's do the expansion draft. Let's pick this guy, this guy, this guy because I like him. But I, I really wanted to try to give you guys a thought process of what to actually look for. And try to do the best you can. Um, there you go. So we're a contender. Um, which is good, because you don't want to be a champion, because you're going to get a high draft pick. Um, yeah, um, the main reason why I did this is not only is it fun for me, but, um, like I was telling you before, I didn't really have two helpful videos. I went on a Facebook group that I found, that I can also link in the description below, um, that is purely for franchise mode. Um, people show or share like their draft picks, like gameplay and all that stuff. And I asked a lot of people on that site, like, oh, like, it, is there any helpful stuff out there? And they're really not. They're... So this is pretty much the main reason why I decided to do this. Because um, there's a lot of hardcore franchise mode people out there like me who have a lot of fun trying to actually like realistically going about this and so it's really fun for me and hopefully you guys enjoy it too so that's it that's my first ever video please like and subscribe uh, if you can if you want more stuff um, please comment if you guys want more stuff if I miss anything uh, uh, and next time we touch this, I'll go through the draft and try to, to explain um, my thought process with the draft. And with that, I'll talk.